Spooky 2 will scan the range specified only once. Found hits will not be reinspected. Back to contents, start button in time, start is self-explanatory. The time shown is the estimated number of minutes for your scan. Biofeedback readout, displays the following values during and after your scan, BPM, of BPM HRV, of HRV, BPM, the heart rate in beats per minute. HRV HRV, heart rate, variability, a low report is good. Emulating spooky pulse GALV, conductivity of the skin. Proper hydration boosts this. Of BPM, your average heart rate over the entire scan session. Of HRV, average heart rate variability during the scan. Of GALV, average session value of the skin's conductivity. The graph's title displays the method of pulse detection chosen, BPM or HRV. Notes, since the user can use either the RA or peak data, values, this means that the biofeedback input is either compared with the RA, or taken at nominal value. In either case, the data received is conditioned so that there are no spikes as the user breathes. If any input data anomaly is detected, Spooky2 will pause for three consecutive good samples to ensure data integrity. When the scan finishes, Spooky2 returns to its hit list to sweep above and below each until it has found the exact value. It then presents the list as a custom frequency set which you can save to your own database. You should save this with a descriptive program name. We suggest you also enter the date in this name. Depending on the values you input, a biofeedback sweep can take 20 to 60 minutes or longer. A bigger sweep range, or smaller initial step sizes, will take more time. However, please note that the input speed is at all times controlled by how fast or how slow your pulse rate is. You can do further sweeps on successive days with different ranges, but save results as personal sweep O2, etc. In this way, you can build a complete frequency profile and run chain sets in a single program, or extract only the ones you want to build a new personal set. Back to contents, NB, scan results are saved to a CSV file in the scan data subdirectory inside the Spooky2 directory. 2. Program optimization, the biofeedback function can also be used to refine all the frequencies in a program to their optimum values. In this mode, the biofeedback scan pane's appearance will change, and many of its parameters will be grayed out and unavailable. Biofeedback scan, start frequency 100,000 finish frequency 200,000, start delay 20, detect pulse, C max BPM min BPM max HRV, user AC use peak, Y2 DP max 10 minutes of smell scan start, load the program you wish to optimize and make all the settings you require. Selecting the option to limit frequency refinement to two decimal places, 2 dp max, can speed things up considerably. 153, Practical Advice Make sure you connect Spooky Pulse to your PC via USB before launching Spooky2. To scan reliably, make sure you're properly hydrated. To detect heart rate changes due solely to frequency hits, you need to be relaxed. Meditation breathing exercises, or even zoning out for five minutes works. Or you can use a web white noise generator and leave it running in the background. We recommend this website. If using TENS pads, place one on the back of the right hand, and the other just below the outside ankle of the left foot. We recommend inverse plus sync with a sine wave. What will happen, after you start the scan, the channel control panel turns, purple and the white box is replaced with a graph showing the current and historical pulse rate. The graph is auto-ranging for optimum display resolution. Graphs always scroll to the left, with current biofeedback, values updating on the right. Back to contents, the horizontal cyan line is the running average rate, RA. When the pulse graph is under this line, the background is green, indicating no stress. When the pulse is above the RA line, the background turns red, indicating a stress response. Note that a low quiescent HRV indicates poor health. During biofeedback scans, 
Spooky 2 disregards the baseline. Any increase in the absolute value of HRV is a sign of momentary stress. When you click Start, you see the following alert. Spooky 2 is now loading the waveform you've selected into the generator. A RE3 channel for alert. Spooky of CMAI my slash loading waveforms. Please wait. Ah. Now let's take a look at a custom biofeedback scan in progress. 154, channel control 3, amplitude, vobble, equency vobble, stop, 1, frequencies, 0, reverse lookup I include octal point 1% tolerance 100,000 Hz, biofeedback scan, go, max hits to find 10 start delay 20, 75 minutes, use RA use peak, single scan, start, total run time 0 o'clock treatment duration 0 o'clock and 6 seconds, Spooky Converge Sweep, CUST, Detect Pulse, 100,000, Max BPM, 150,000 F Min BPM, 100 Hz Max HRV, 0, Output, Frequency Waveform. Duty Cycle Amplitude Offset Phase Angle, BPM 84.09 HRV.82, Out 1 Out 2. 100,000.323,158,125.44, sine wave sine wave, 50% 50%, 5v 5v, 0% 0 0%, 0 degrees 0 degrees, off. BPM Avenue. HRV, 83.48, 1.31, HRV, sync off, here, a custom scan has just been started. The numbers to the right of the BPM graph show the graph's range. The number at the bottom, 12, is a countdown while Spooky2 fills the running average data array. In this example, the start delay has been set to 20 heartbeats. Back to contents, 155, channel control 3, Amplitude, Vobble, Ekni, VOBBLE, stop, 1, frequencies, 0. Reverse lookup I include octal point 1% tolerance 100,000 Hz, biofeedback scan, go, max hits to find 10 start delay 20, use RA use peak, F, 75 minutes or single scan, start, total run time 0 o'clock treatment duration 0 02 and 25 seconds, detect pulse, 100,000, F max BPM, 150,000 F min BPM, 100 Hz G max HRV, 0, output, frequency waveform duty cycle amplitude offset phase angle, 320, BPM 83.2 HRV 2.68, of, BPM 83.58 of, HRV 2.64, out 1 out 2, 130,000.323 million 128,125.44, Sine wave sine wave, 50% 50%, 5v 5v, 0% 0% 0% 0% degrees 100,000-150,000, to 100 sync off, the custom scan is now well underway. The numbers under the graph display the range of frequencies that are being scanned. During the second phase of the biofeedback scan, when the resolution of hits is increased, unless single scan has been checked, the ranges will change appropriately. Back to contents, 156, channel control 6, total runtime treatment duration, 0 33, 0 o'clock and 27 seconds, amplitude, vobble, equancy, vobble, stop, frequencies, 11, reverse lookup I include octal point 1% tolerance, biofeedback scan, 100,000 Hz, go, detect pulse, Max BPM F min BPM max HRV, start delay 20, 36 minutes, I, R, use RA use peak 2 DP max, frequency waveform duty cycle amplitude offset phase angle, out 1 out 2, 2719.35 2719.35, square wave inverse plus sync, 50% 50%, 5V 5V, 0% 0%, 0 degrees 0 degrees, 56, BPM, HRV, 88.91, 6.76, of, BPM 83.77 of, HRV 3.11, start, 
2719-2721, sync on, here's a different channel that is frequencies being optimized. You can see that almost all the biofeedback scan text fields are disabled, but the option to limit frequency refinement to 2 dp max is available. Checking this can speed up results markedly. Note that some very useful biofeedback functions are also available in the advanced menu. Back to contents, 157, wobbles and feathering, amplitude wobble disabled, 0% 16 steps, frequency wobble disabled, 0% 16 steps, certain pathogens can be hard to kill straight away, so they will require multiple treatment sessions. One problem that can arise with this is that they may become adapted to the treatments, and so take longer to eradicate. The answer is to prevent this from happening by constantly and minutely varying either the exact values of the frequencies being applied, or their amplitudes, or both. You have three methods to choose from, and you can use all if you wish. The first are amplitude and frequency wobbles. The menus above allow you to select from three waveforms that describe the trajectory along which the change will be applied sawtooth, inverse sawtooth, and triangle. The percent field dictates how intensely the change will be applied. And the steps parameter lets you specify how many discrete steps or jumps the change will make from one value to the next. For amplitude, 10 to 15% is a reasonable value for intensity, and 1% is good for frequency. Sawtooth, 15 steps, steps are the red dots in the illustrations above. They are discrete values along the trajectories of the waveforms. So these wobbles aren't applied smoothly and continuously, they jump from each step position to the next, without any change in value in between. A good general option for steps is 16. Back to contents, 158, the Apoly menu, the second method of preventing pathogen adaptation is a different kind of frequency wobble, found in the Apoly menu. This menu also contains two feathering options, Feathering is true randomization of values within a fixed percentage above and below the frequency being processed. There are 28 choices, all of which are detailed below. The difference between the apply menu options and the other wobbles is that these ones are all pre-configured, no user input or tailoring is possible. The general rules on frequency wobbles and feathering are, for something that's non-living, the Apple setting should be frequencies directly, for example metals, pollutants, toxins. We don't wobble non-living things because they cannot mutate. If it's a living thing, and it belongs naturally in your body, the Apoly setting should also be frequencies directly, for example normalize liver, relieve pain, stimulate immune system, this is because we're usually applying precise entrainment frequencies. If it's a living thing, and it doesn't belong naturally in your body, the Apoly setting should be anything other than frequencies directly. This is because living things can mutate over time, thus changing their frequencies slightly, and you need to feather to catch those mutations, for example bacteria, fungi, parasites, viruses. Research and observation has shown that plus minus 0.02% feathering is generally best for remote mode, although there are also other excellent choices. So please feel free to experiment. But whichever setting you choose, it's important to examine the frequencies you're running so that you can be aware of what that setting will do to them. Here are some examples, back to contents 159, frequency, 1000, 1000 Hz dash 1 kHz, setting 1, plus minus 0.02% feathering. Result 1, random from 999.80-1000.20, randomization range equals 0.4 Hz. Setting 2, octal harmonics 12 stage wobble. Result 2, 1000, 2000, 4000, 8000, 16000, 32000, 64000, 32000, 16000, 8000, 4000, 2000. Frequency, 100,000, 100,000 Hz dash 100 kHz, setting 1, plus minus 0.02% feathering. Result 1, random from 99,980 to 100,020 randomization range equals 40 Hz. Setting 2, octal harmonics 12 stage wobble. 
Result 2, 100,000, 200,000, 400,000, 800,000, 1 million 600,000, 3 million 200,000, 6 million 400,000, 3 million 200,000, 1 million 600,000, 800,000, 400,000, 200,000, frequency, 1 million, 1 million hertz dash 1 megahertz, setting 1, plus minus 0.02% feathering. Result 1, random from 9998000-1000200, randomization range equals 400 hertz. Setting 2, octal harmonics 12 stage wobble. Result 2, 1 million, 2 million, 4 million, 8 million, 16 million, 32 million, 64 million, 32 million, 16 million, 8 million, 4 million, 2 million. Feather creates rapid random changes in the frequency so it changes up and down in value within a set maximum percentage. Wobble creates rapid controlled changes in the frequency so it changes by constant values dictated by the choice you make in the Apple menu. Let's take a closer look at the choices here, F equals the frequency, frequencies directly, applies the frequencies directly with no changes. HI plus minus 0.02% feathering, output will fluctuate rapidly by 0.02% above and below the set frequency randomly. Useful where the exact frequency of a pathogen may be uncertain. Excellent for remote treatment. Plus minus 0.05% feathering, same as 0.02% feathering but the variation is greater. Frequencies of mathematical relatives called harmonics. Higher harmonics can be very powerful. These options create the following continuous harmonic step sequences at a rate set in the refresh rate field in the advanced menu. Back to contents, 160.02% four stage wobble, F, F plus 0.02%, F, F.02%, 0.02% eight stage wobble, F, F plus 0.01%, F plus 0.02%, F plus point zero one per cent, F, F point zero one per cent, F point zero two per cent, F point zero one per cent, point zero five per cent four stage wobble, F, F plus point zero five per cent, F, F point zero five per cent, point zero five per cent eight stage wobble, F, F plus point zero two five per cent, F plus point zero five per cent. F plus point zero two five per cent, F, F point zero two five per cent, F point zero five per cent, F O two five per cent, Octal Harmonics two stage wobble, F, FX two, Octal Harmonics four stage wobble, F, FX two, FX four, FX two, Octal Harmonics six stage wobble, F, FX two, FX four, FX six, FX four, FX two. Octal harmonics 8 stage wobble, F, FX2, FX4, FX6, FX8, FX6, FX4, FX2, Octal harmonics 10 stage wobble, F, FX2, FX4, FX6, FX8, FX10, FX8, FX6, FX4, FX2, back to contents, Octal harmonics 12 stage wobble, F, FX2, FX 4, FX 6, FX 8, FX 10, FX 12, FX 10, FX 8, FX 6, FX 4, FX 2. A perfect square wave is made up of odd harmonics. Spooky 2 can force these to work harder by fluctuating to higher ones. Odd harmonics 2 stage wobble, F, FX 3, odd harmonics 4 stage wobble, F, FX 3, FX 5. FX3, odd harmonics 6 stage wobble, F, FX3, FX5, FX7, FX5, FX3, odd harmonics 8 stage wobble, F, FX3, FX5, FX7, FX9, FX7, FX5, FX3, odd harmonics 10 stage wobble, F, FX3, FX5, FX7, FX9. FX11, FX9, FX7, FX5, FX3, odd harmonics 12 stage wobble, F, 
FX3, FX5, FX7, FX9, FX11, FX13, FX11, FX9, FX7, FX5, FX3. The Fibonacci series of numbers can be seen everywhere in nature. It's an excellent choice for good results. 161, Fibonacci series 3 stage wobble, F, F, FX2, Fibonacci series 5 stage wobble, F, F, FX2, FX3, FX2, Fibonacci series 7 stage wobble, F, F, FX2, FX3, FX5, FX3, FX2, Fibonacci series 9 stage wobble, F, F, FX2, FX3, FX5, FX8, FX5, FX3, FX2, Fibonacci series 11 stage wobble, F, F, FX2, FX3, FX5, F, X8, FX13, FX8, FX5, FX3, FX2, Fibonacci series 13 stage wobble, F, F, FX2, FX3, FX5, FX8, FX13, FX21, FX13, FY, FX5, FX3, FX2, KLR at, CH1, F equals 0016673. 8 AM PL equals 20. OOV duty equals 50. 0 P equals, back to contents, Fibonacci series 15 stage wobble, F, F, FX2, FX3, FX5, FX8, FX13, FX21, FX34, FX21, FX13, FX8, FX5, FX3, FX2. The natural logarithm, also called EXP, 3, is a mathematical way to describe universal growth in time. But it can also be used to calculate highly effective frequency harmonics. One highly respected Rife developer recommends it exclusively to calculate the most accurate frequency harmonics, scalars, natural log 2 step wobble, f, fx 20.08553692322, natural log 4 step wobble, f, fx 20.08553692322, fx 403.428793492728. c8. FX 20.08553692322, the waveform symbol you see here causes some confusion. Users wonder why, when they've selected a square or an inverse or tooth in Spooky2, they see this squiggly line instead. Well, as you now know, Spooky2 creates all of its waveforms as arbitrary waves, then downloads them to the generator. And this squiggly symbol on the Spooky 2-5M display simply shows that an arbitrary waveform is being used rather than one of the generator's own built-in waves. Mystery solved. 162, Waveform and Frequency, even though they may look mysterious, waveforms are very easy to understand. They are simply graphical illustrations of how the amplitude, or power, of energy changes over time. Let's look at the waves in Spooky 2. The vertical red line at left measures positive and negative amplitudes, with zero being the divider. The horizontal red line at bottom shows time, one second. Sine wave, like all the waves shown below, this one completes one full cycle every second, so its frequency is 1 Hz. A. Amplitude rises from zero in a positive direction at a changing rate. B. Amplitude has reached its highest positive point, or peak. C. It goes below zero and continues in a negative direction at a changing rate. D. Amplitude reaches its highest negative point, or peak. E. Amplitude once again starts to move in a positive direction at a changing rate. Good for, healing, detox, killing, at very high frequencies. Square wave, this also completes one full cycle every second, so its frequency is 1 Hz. A. Amplitude is running at its highest positive level at a constant rate. B. Amplitude immediately drops below zero and continues in a negative direction. C. Amplitude is running at its highest negative level at a constant rate. D. Amplitude immediately moves through zero to hit peak positive level. Good for, killing, 
healing, detox. Back to contents, 163, sawtooth, this completes its full cycle in one second, so its frequency is 1 Hz. A. Amplitude moves from negative peak towards positive at a constant rate. B. Amplitude passes through 0. C. It continues to move in a positive direction at a constant rate. D. Amplitude immediately drops through 0 to peak negative level. Good for experimentation as a possible linear substitute for sine. Inverse or tooth, this completes its full cycle in one second, so its frequency is 1 Hz. A. Amplitude ramps down from positive peak level at a constant rate. B. Amplitude passes through 0. C. Amplitude continues to move in a negative direction at a constant rate. D. Amplitude immediately moves through 0 to peak positive level. Good for killing. The sawtooth and the inverse sawtooth are the only two waveforms that are mirror images of each other. Sawtooth always rises slowly and drops quickly, where inverse sawtooth always falls slowly and rises quickly. Although this may seem insignificant, it's actually very important, and we'll look at the different results in a later section. Back to contents, 164, triangle, also completes its full cycle in one second, so its frequency is 1 Hz. A. Amplitude moves from negative peak level at a constant rate. B. Amplitude passes through 0. C. Amplitude reaches its peak positive level, then starts to fall at a constant rate. D. Amplitude passes through 0. E. Amplitude reaches its peak negative level. Good for experimentation as a possible linear substitute for sine. Damped sinusoidal, this is the exclusive Spooky 2 recreation of Dr. Royal Raymond Rife's famous damped sinusoidal which was used in a documented cure of 14 terminal cancers and 2 terminal TB cases. This, like all the following waves, is different. It's composed of a sequence of 12 internal signs, each with progressively decaying cycles from positive to negative. Spooky 2 automatically compensates for all composite multi-cycle waveforms so that their output frequencies are always correct. A. Amplitude is at peak level. B. Amplitude ramps down with 12 internal progressively decaying cycles passing from positive to negative through zero on each one. C. Amplitude immediately moves back up to peak positive level. Good for healing, detox, killing, at very high frequencies. Spooky to note, the total number of internal cycles in a single composite cycle is controlled by the value you enter in the wave cycle multiplier field, 12 in this case. Back to contents, 165, damped square, a new waveform based on the principles of the damped sinusoidal. Its 12 internal square waves progressively, decay and Spooky2 automatically adjusts the composite waveform to make its transmitted frequency correct. A. Amplitude is at peak level. B. Amplitude drops sharply with 12 internal progressively decaying cycles passing from positive to negative through zero on each one. C. Amplitude immediately rises back up to peak positive level. Good for killing, healing, detox. Spooky to note, the total number of internal cycles in a single composite cycle is controlled by the value you enter in the wave cycle multiplier field. 12 in this case. H bomb sinusoidal, another new wave based on the damped sinusoidal. Technically, it's more complex and involves duty cycle computations. It's built from eight internal sine cycles, and the composite waveform is automatically adjusted to make its transmitted frequency correct. A. Amplitude is at zero. B. Amplitude ramps to peak positive level then ramps back through zero to peak negative level. C. Amplitude rises and proceeds through six smaller internal cycles. D. Amplitude ramps to peak positive level, then ramps back through zero to peak negative level. E. Amplitude moves back up to zero. Good for healing, detox, killing, at very high frequencies. Spooky to note. The total number of internal cycles in a single composite cycle is controlled by the value you enter in the wave cycle multiplier field, 8 here. Back to contents, 166, 
H bomb square, this is a third new wave form based on the principles behind the damped square. It's built from eight internal, square wave cycles, and Spooky2 automatically adjusts the composite waveform to make its transmitted frequency correct. A. Amplitude is at zero. B. Amplitude rises sharply to peak positive level, then moves immediately through, zero to peak negative level. C. Amplitude rises and proceeds through six smaller internal cycles. D. Amplitude rises sharply to peak positive level, then moves immediately through zero to peak negative level. E. Amplitude moves back up to zero. Good for, killing, healing, detox. Spooky to note, the total number of internal cycles in a single composite cycle is controlled by the value you enter in the wave cycle multiplier field, 8 here. So let's sum up, frequency is how often the energy in something changes from a positive state to a negative state in one second of time. Waveform is a visual representation of how the energy's power ramps up and down during one such change. But we're not finished yet. We need to take a look at two other important properties which have great importance for how waveforms behave. The first is offset, and this applies to all waveforms. The second is duty cycle, which applies only to plain square waves. So let's do that that now. Back to contents, 167, waveform and offset, you've seen that normal waveforms have two phases, positive and negative. What this means in practice is that positive energy is applied by the waveform for half its cycle, and negative energy is applied for the other half. Some renowned energy medicine researchers, most notably Dr. Hugh de Clark, maintain that it's more effective for pathogen killing to apply unidirectional energy only. You can do this by using offset. So that you can see the effect of offset clearly, I've chosen a triangle wave here. This one has 0% offset, the wave is in its positive phase for 50% of his cycle, above the red zero line, and in its negative phase for the other 50%, below the red zero line. Above are the settings to enter for a normal zero offset waveform like this. On the left, you can see that this is still the same triangle waveform, but its position on the graph is now different. I've given it a 100% positive offset, and the wave is now entirely in its positive phase for its whole cycle. Above are the settings for 100% positive offset when using inverse plus sync with spooky boost. If you wish to use follow out instead of inverse plus sync, the values to enter for both outs are 100 and 100, both positive. For direct connector out one only, you'd enter 0 instead of minus 100. Back to contents, 168. If you choose to use a positive offset, one very important thing you mustn't forget is its effect on available amplitude. A 5M generator has a voltage range that goes from minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts. This gives us a total range of 20 volts when measured from the highest negative peak to the highest positive peak, so the generators output 20 volts peak to peak. However, since we've applied a 100% positive offset here and pushed the waveform up into the positive phase only, this means that the voltage available for a potential negative phase is not used, since no part of the signal is now negative. As a result, applying an offset to any waveform may reduce the overall amplitude of your signal, see table below. XM Amplitude Setting XM Offset Setting, Percent Output Signal VMAX, V. Output signal VMIN, V, total output signal, VPP, 50 plus 2.5-2.55, 5100 plus 505, 100 plus 5-510, 5 10 100 plus 1010, 20 plus 10-1020, 10 2100 20 plus 1010, VMAX equals volts maximum. VMIN equals volts minimum. VPP equals volts peak to peak. Back to contents, 169, duty cycle. Duty cycle can be a confusing concept to grasp for many newcomers to Rife technology. So let's try to unconfuse things as much as possible. Every waveform has a cycle, this is one complete iteration of the wave from its beginning to its end, then it repeats the exact same pattern for the next wave cycle. Duty cycle is related to this, but it dictates strictly one thing, 
For how long during a wave cycle the signal is held constant at its maximum amplitude. And this is the key to understanding it. Because if you cast your mind back to a few moments ago when we went through all the different waveforms, you'll remember that each of them is constantly changing its amplitude. Except for one, the square wave. A square wave goes from zero to full amplitude almost instantly, then holds that amplitude constant for a period of time before falling almost instantly back to zero again. Duty cycle is what gives us control over the length of the period for which that constant amplitude is held, so duty cycle really can only ever apply to a plane square wave. This one on the left has a default duty cycle of 50%. This means that the signal is delivered at full amplitude for half of the wave's natural cycle, then it's turned off until the next wave cycle begins. If you set its duty cycle to 0%, you'd have no signal at all, and if you set it to 100%, you'd have a constant uninterrupted signal, neither of which are useful in Rife therapy. So duty cycle gives you control over how long the square wave's maximum amplitude is held steady inside every cycle of the wave. As a result, it can be thought of as a kind of built-in gate. However, due to the nature of the square wave, duty cycle is much more useful than this. A square wave is naturally rich in odd harmonics, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and so on. However, it is almost as if these harmonics are not generated instantly in time, but revealed instead in a lightning-fast glissando, much like someone running a finger up the, back to contents, 170 keys of a piano. So the larger the square wave's duty cycle value is, the more harmonics are revealed because the glissando is being played for longer. And once you start to go much higher than 50%, even harmonics start to show themselves too. For me personally, this makes a great deal of sense. Here's why, the heart of every symphony orchestra is the strings section, full-bodied, rich, and powerful. As a former professional composer and sound designer, I can convincingly emulate an entire orchestral strings section on a music synthesizer using only sawtooth waves. I can't do that with square waves, which are good for emulating brass instruments only. Nice, but not the same thing. Back to contents, 171, understanding Spooky Remote. Spooky Remote was introduced before the 5M generator was available so the only generator you could use with it was the UDB1108S. At that time, calibrating this generator had to be done manually with a multimeter. Because this cheap and cheerful unit's components tended to drift over time, you had to do your calibration routine at least once a month, but preferably every week, a painful chore if you were using a bunch of UDBs, as I was. But Spooky Remote offered a brilliantly simple way to calibrate quickly and easily without needing a multimeter. Every remote has two red LEDs. One LED uses the positive part of the signal to illuminate, and the other uses the negative part. So when you loaded the signal test set and ran it, you turned the amplitude knob up full, then adjusted the offset knob until both LEDs shone equally brightly. When they did, your setup was calibrated, meaning that the positive and negative aspects of the signal were equal in strength. In other words, the signal's offset from the point of equal power was zero. This meant you could recalibrate as often as you wished, even in the middle of a program, and I believe that the constant application of properly calibrated frequencies was responsible for at least some of the excellent results that started to come in after the remote entered widespread use. However, after the introduction of the 5M generator, which is calibrated by the user entering values for amplitude and offset in the Spooky2 software, the remote LEDs didn't seem to have any purpose other than letting the user know that a signal was being transmitted. Many users were confused. Seemingly baffling LED behavior ranging from only one LED lighting to neither of them working was reported. But to those with the knowledge, this was all normal and to be expected. Back to contents, 172, the truth is that the LEDs are far more useful than they appear, as once you understand how they work, you'll be able to judge at a glance a lot more of what's going on in your generator. Three things control how the LEDs respond to the signal, frequency, waveform, and amplitude. I don't own an oscilloscope, 
so I've constructed the graphics in Spooky2 by using wave cycle multipliers to give you an indication of what's going on. First, let's look at frequency, remote and frequency, this is a 1 Hz square wave. It completes one positive to negative cycle every second. A signal is positive for half a second, so the left LED lights for half a second. B signal immediately drops through zero to negative. C signal is negative for half a second, so the right LED lights for half a second. The LEDs turn on and off very slowly, and are never both lit at the same time. Now here's a 32 Hz square wave, it completes 32 positive to negative cycles every second. Count the peaks, there are 32. With this frequency, the entire ABC cycle described above takes place 32 times every second. This means that for every one of those 32 cycles, the signal is positive for 1 slash 64th of a second, so the left LED is lit for 1 slash 64th of a second. The signal then goes negative for 1 slash 64th of a second, so the right LED lights for 1 slash 64th of a second. Back to contents, 173, now the LEDs are both flashing quite quickly. Nevertheless, it's always the case that only one of them is lit at a time. Note that if you use a wave cycle multiplier of 12, the frequency sent to the 5M is divided by 12. Now let's move it up a notch. Here's a 256 Hz square wave. Please note that a real one you'd see on an oscilloscope doesn't look exactly like this, what we're running up against here are the resolution limits of computer screens. Nevertheless, 256 cycles in a single second moves the peaks of each one so close to one another that the PC screen cannot show any degree of separation between them. Now, the original ABC positive to negative cycle happens 256 times every, one second. And for each of those 256 cycles, the signal is positive for 1 slash 512th of a second, so, 1 the left LED lights for 1 slash 512th of second. I, I, the cycle then goes negative for 1 slash 512th of a second, so the right LED is lit for 1 slash 512th of a second. Now each LED will appear to be constantly lit, at equal brightness. However, as you now know, it's not possible for each LED to be lit at the same time, because the signal can never be both positive and negative at the same time, so what you're seeing is an illusion that's caused by the limits of the human eye. That same illusion is what allows movies, which are a series of still photos transmitted in sequence at a frequency of about 24 per second, to appear to be a facsimile of real life. We come up against a different type of limit when we start to transmit very high frequencies in the megahertz range, which is millions of cycles every second, the limits of some of our present day technologies. What happens with high megahertz frequencies is that the cycle switches from positive to negative so fast that neither LED has time to switch on fully before it receives the signal to switch off again. The result is the LEDs appear to go very dim, and may even appear to be turned off completely. Back to contents 174, this doesn't mean that Spooky2, the generator, or the remote have stopped working, just that current LED switching technology isn't fast enough to keep up with what's happening with an extremely fast signal. This is nothing to worry about. Remote and amplitude, however, there's another scenario where the LEDs can appear to be very dim, or even unlit, and this one doesn't involve very high frequencies at all. Every time an LED lights up, it uses a very tiny fraction of the frequency's motive power, amplitude, otherwise known as voltage. At amplitudes above about 5 volts, you won't really see any difference in the luminance of the LEDs. However, if you set your amplitude lower than this, the voltage available to light up the LEDs drops off, and the result is that they appear to be dim. At very low amplitudes, they will look like they're not working at all. This is also nothing to worry about. In fact, it's a good thing because it means that all of the frequency's voltage is being used for the purpose intended, healing. Remote and waveform, would it surprise you to learn that you can get a pretty good idea of which waveform is being used on a channel from watching how the remote LEDs behave at low frequencies? For all of the examples I've already shown you, 
we used a square wave. With a square, the power is always constant at positive and negative polarities, and the change from positive to negative is almost instantaneous. However, exactly the same positive to negative switching principles apply to all the waveforms in Spooky2, and at low frequencies, you'll be able to see that the changes in brightness of both LEDs reflects the actual shape of the waveform. Let's go back to some of the original waveform graphics to explain what happens, back to contents 175, here's what happens with a 1 Hz sine wave, A, positive amplitude ramps up, so the left LED gets progressively brighter. B, amplitude has reached its high point, so the left LED is at its brightest. C, amplitude falls, so the LED dims and goes out, while the right LED starts to brighten. D, negative amplitude reaches its high point, so the right LED is at its brightest. E, amplitude once again starts to go positive, so the right LED starts to dim. Here's an inverse sawtooth waveform, also at 1 Hz, A, positive amplitude falls at a constant rate, so the left LED slowly dims. B, amplitude passes through zero, the left LED goes out and the right one comes on. C, negative amplitude increases at a constant rate, so the right LED slowly brightens. D, amplitude rises through zero to peak positive, so the right LED goes out and the left one immediately brightens fully. Let's take a look at the 1 Hz damped sinusoidal, A, amplitude is at peak, so the left LED is fully lit. As amplitude ramps down, the LED dims and goes out, and the right LED comes on dimly and starts to brighten. B, amplitude falls away with 12 internal rises and falls passing from positive to negative through zero so each LED will brighten and dim 12 times in succession, and the brightness ramps up and down gradually. With a damped square, the LEDs wouldn't ramp up and down, they'd simply switch on and off alternately. C. At this point, both LEDs are very dimly lit because of the low amplitudes. Finally, the amplitude returns to peak positive to start the cycle all over again. Back to contents, 176, by now, you should be able to predict LED behavior when spooky remote is fed a 1 Hz H bond square, A, amplitude is at zero, so neither LED is lit. B, amplitude rises to peak positive level, then falls through zero to peak negative level. This means that the left LED will light fully, then go out as the right LED illuminates fully. C, amplitude rises and proceeds through six smaller internal switches. So each LED switches six times in succession, but not to the same intensity of brightness as the first peak. With H-bomb sinusoidal, the LEDs will dim and brighten gradually rather than switch. D. Step B is repeated. E. Amplitude returns to zero, so both LEDs go out. Finally, before we move on, there's one very important thing you will have realized from reading all the foregoing. The spooky remote LEDs are powered and controlled by frequency, waveform, and amplitude. If Spooky2 is not sending a program to instruct your generator to create these, the remote will naturally receive none of them. So neither one of the remote LEDs can possibly light up. Now you, too, have the knowledge. You should experiment for yourself with the various waveforms and very low frequencies at different amplitudes so you can see for yourself the different results they produce in various combinations. With a little practice and patience, you can learn to use the remote's LEDs as a useful tool rather than simply a way to answer today's burning technical question, is this thing on? Back to contents, 177, Understanding Spectrum. When I told John I wanted to do a section designed to make Spectrum easy, he laughed and wished me luck. Now I know why, the mathematics underlying it baffles even the best engineers, and many professional mathematicians would be hard pressed to understand what's going on under the hood. So the best I can do is to explain how the Spectrum parameters affect the output signal, and give you some examples. This will give you a good handle on it all. But the first thing you must understand about spectrum is what it's meant to be used for. Spectrum was designed to kill every organism foreign to the body. Its primary purpose is not to heal, not to support, 
not to detox. It's really meant to be an executioner, for viruses, bacteria, fungi, mold, yeast, and parasites. So whenever you use it, you should also run detox and support programs. There are three sweeps that use Spectrum in the Spooky2 database and the Create Spectrum Sweep facility makes it easy to design your own. However, you should remember that a sweep slowly moves from one frequency to another, so you will need to know the low and high frequencies that define the range in which your chosen target lives. But sweeps are pretty straightforward. What's less well understood is the idea of applying spectrum to static single frequencies. The first technical area we must look at is power, or amplitude, Spectrum is a mathematical way to make one parent static or moving frequency produce up to 1024 child frequencies simultaneously, spread equally above and below that frequency. While this is an amazing feat, you must never forget that a generator's available amplitude is divided between all the frequencies it's currently transmitting. All the 5M generators operate at a maximum of 20 volts per output. So if you build a spectrum that creates 1024 frequencies at the same time, the amplitude of each would be 0.019531.25 volts less than 1 50th of a volt. While this might be useful in remote mode, we can't say for sure yet because we haven't had time to research it, it's certain that it would be no good in contact mode, which needs higher far voltages to penetrate the skin. Back to contents, 178, there are two answers to this problem. The first is to reduce the number of frequencies being transmitted so there's more power available to each of them. The second is to use a spooky amplifier, development of which has now entered its final stages. Since it's presently our only option, let's start with the first case by defining our terms. Center frequency, this is your frequency on which the spectrum will be centered. Child frequencies will range above and below. Spectrum percent this is how you set the range within which frequencies will be created, spectrum is always a percentage of your center frequency. Wave cycle multiplier, x, this is how you set the number of child frequencies to be produced. Because frequencies are created both above and below the center frequency, the number of child frequencies you create will be twice the value you enter here. To make things clearer and easier to follow. Let's say we want to apply spectrum to a frequency of 500 Hz, this is our center frequency. Example 1, we want to create 100 child frequencies that will range from 450 Hz to 550 Hz with the values 450, 451, 452, 453, 454, 455, etc. So 500 Hz is our center frequency and each frequency is spaced 1 Hz apart. Here's how to find the value to enter for spectrum percent to make this happen. A. We want 100 child frequencies, so our wave cycle multiplier must be half this, 50. Multiply this value by 100, 50x 100 equals 5000. B. Multiply this result by our required frequency spacing, 1 Hz. 5000 x 1 equals 5000, c, divide this by our center frequency, 500 Hz, 5500 s equals 10, back to contents 179, so 10 is the value we must enter in the spectrum percent field and 50 in the wave cycle multiplier field to produce our result. Example 2, let's make spooky to output 20 individual frequencies ranging from 990 to 1010 Hz in 1 Hz steps. This is a far more effective way to produce a cluster of frequencies around a set center frequency than by using any frequency wobble, wobbled frequencies are produced one after another, they're linear, and thus their dwell is momentary. Spectrum frequencies are produced in parallel, and their dwells are thus all equal to the center frequencies dwell, a, we want 20 child frequencies, so our wave cycle multiplier must be half this, 10. Multiply this value by 100, 10x 100 equals 1000, b, multiply this result by our required frequency spacing, 1 hertz, 1000x 1 equals 1000, c, divide this by our center frequency, 1000 hertz, 1000 1000s 1000 equals 1, so 1 is the value we must enter in the spectrum percent field and 10 in the wave cycle multiplier field to produce our result. 
Example 3, let's say that we wish to produce 20 evenly spaced frequencies centered around 1000 Hz ranging from 500 Hz to 1500 Hz to produce the sequence 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900, 950, 1000, 1050, 1100, 1150, 1200, 1250. 1300, 1350, 1400, 1450, and 1500. There are 21 frequencies in all, our center frequency plus 10 below it and 10 above it. A. We want 20 child frequencies, so our wave cycle multiplier must be half this, 10. Multiply this value by 100, 10x 100 equals 1000, back to contents, 180, B. Multiply this result by our required frequency spacing, 50 Hz, 1000 x 50 equals 50,000, C. Divide this by our center frequency, 1000 Hz, 50,000 1 thousandths equals 50, so 50 is the value we must enter in the spectrum percent field and 10 in the wave cycle multiplier field to produce our result. Example 4, let's introduce another factor, mortal oscillatory rate tolerance. This is the actual frequency of the pathogen. Dr. Reif found that if you used any frequency that was within plus slash minus 0.025% of the pathogen's MOR, it would still be killed. To see how this can be very useful, we'll take a look at two frequencies, 150 Hz and 1,500,000 Hz, 1.5 MHz. The tolerance for 150 Hz is 0.0375 Hz. 0.025% of 150 Hz, which means that any frequency from 149.9625 Hz to 150.0375 Hz will kill a pathogen whose MOR is 150 Hz. Interesting, but not too useful. However, it's very important to remember that virtually all the frequencies we have today were developed on machines that had a top frequency limit of 10,000 Hz or 100,000 Hz but Dr. Reif and Dr. Clark had found that the actual MORs of pathogens were up in the megahertz range, which these machines couldn't transmit. This means that we're still dealing with low weaker subharmonics because of the technical limitations of the past. But the day is over now. Spooky2 can transmit up to 25 million hertz. So here's where MOR tolerance becomes useful to us, the tolerance for 1,500,000 hertz, 1.5 megahertz, is 375 hertz, which means that any frequency from 1,499,625 hertz to 1,500,375 hertz will kill a pathogen whose MOR is 1.5 megahertz but it will also kill everything else whose MORs lie within that range. Back to contents 181, and that's not the only benefit. MOR tolerance up in the megahertz range means we can take far bigger steps through frequencies and still be guaranteed we're going to kill bad guys. Here's one example of this using 1.5 megahertz as our center frequency, A, let's say we want 100 child frequencies, so our wave cycle multiplier must be half this, 50. Multiply this value by 100, 50x 100 equals 5000, b. Multiply this result by our required frequency spacing, we're allowed up to 375 hertz, but let's play safe and choose 350 hertz, 5000x 350 equals 1,750,000 c. Divide this by our center frequency, 1,500,000 hertz. 1,750,000 equals 1.17, so 1.17 is the value you must enter in the spectrum percent field and 50. In the wave cycle multiplier field to produce your result, by transmitting 1.5 MHz with these spectrum percent and wave cycle multiplier settings, you will hit every pathogen whose MOR lies between 1,482,150 Hz and 1,517,850 Hz. That's a lot of territory that can be covered by just one frequency. So by carefully designing custom spectrum frequency sets with the right center frequencies, you can start to take giant strides through the entire megahertz range, which is where all the bad guys really hang out. Suddenly. 
those very big numbers are not quite as daunting as you may have thought. Back to contents 182, two formulas, one. The formula to calculate the required spectrum percent value is, spectrum equals, half the number of child frequencies required x100, x frequency spacing desired slash center frequency, two. The formula to calculate the frequency spacing that will be produced by any given spectrum percent value is, frequency spacing equals, center frequency x spectrum, slash, wave cycle multiplier x100. Note that calculations enclosed in parentheses should always be resolved first before carrying out any other maths operations. So in the example above, you'd first multiply center frequency by spectrum percent, note down the result, then multiply the wave cycle multiplier by 100. Only then would you divide your first result by your second one. One final word of advice about spectrum, always sit down with pencil, paper, and calculate it first and plan exactly what you want to achieve. Once you get the hang of it, there's no limit to what can be done. But for the moment, if you wish to try doing contact spectrum sessions, don't forget to divide the generator's amplitude by the number of child frequencies plus the center frequency to see how much power each frequency is going to be allocated. Back to contents, 183, multi-talented spooky 2, I've owned three very expensive top-line commercial rife machines that together cost me the price of a small car. I returned the most expensive one for a partial refund because it kept breaking down. A second one never worked from the moment I took it out of the box. The third works fine, and it's built like a tank, so it fulfills the first necessity for any machine that's going to be, literally, vitally important, reliability. Yet I choose to use the cheap and cheerful Spooky 2. I use it because I believe it's the most powerful, effective, and versatile rife machine that money can buy. Very little money. But Spooky 2 isn't just a rife machine. Right now, it can also make high-quality ninocolloidal silver. Function as a powerful Clark zapper, with spectrum zapping as an added bonus. Be used very effectively as a foot tubs rife system, new section coming soon. Eradicate insect pests and molds in the home. And more is planned for the future. A lot more. Colloidal silver. Silver has long been used in healing. It's powerfully antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal, as well as an essential human and animal micronutrient. It's been used effectively against cancers, Lyme disease, AIDS, Epstein-Barr virus, candida, parasites, and warts. However, it must be in the correct form in order to perform its miracles.